Gamers and game mats, what is going on? My name is Tanuk127, and welcome back to another Torchlight video. And before we get into today's video, guys, as usual, let me do my shameless plugins. If you're not, make sure you're following me at the appropriate social media at Tanuk127, which includes Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. And also, guys, if you all want more Torchlight 3 news, guides, videos, information, and stuff like that, make sure you are liking today's video, subscribing to the channel if you are new, and of course, ringing the silly bell because YouTube likes boning us with notifications. But anyway, guys, what is going on? If y'all can't tell by the hype in my voice, Torchlight 3 is fine finally here <sighs> on console and not gonna lie I'm a little bit salty that I'm playing on PC right now but that's because PC players got PC players that owned early access got six days early access to the 1.0 release version so that made it possible for me to make this guide for you guys and speaking of early access special shout out to the team down at Torchlight uh, Torchlight 3 and Extra Games for hooking me up with this review copy for PC so I could make content for you guys. But you guys already know I got a PC copy for them. And special thank you to them for my console copy as well. Now, um, big fat, uh, big fat disclaimer, I am still fairly new to Torchlight 3. Despite me playing in, you know, a lot of the alphas, beta tests, and, and things like that, I have went through a thousand wipes. Things on this game have changed frequently, so I'm still learning its systems a ton. So this guide will strictly be for beginners. And I know I talked a lot in this intro, so don't worry. There was a um a little timestamp in the beginning so you could skip to the main points of you know what you guys want to see. But anyway, guys, alright. So when you first when you first build Torchlight 3, you're gonna be greeted with a screen that says single player or multiplayer. If you guys have been listening to the MMO experience I've been bragging about for the past two years. I really hope you clicked multiplayer. I don't know why anybody would want to play a game like this solo. Like this Path of Exile, Diablo, or anything. I don't know why. I, I, I personally, I don't care about playing these games solo. But I know I know that's not the point. Everybody's got their preferences. And I'm not here to dog anybody for wanting to play it solo. So relax. Don't dislike my video for that. But um, let's go ahead. We're going to start off with the classes. As you guys can see, I am a Dusk Mage Blood Drinker here. A.K.A. a class I'm building called a... Dark Knight. I will give you guys the the rundown on this class as soon as I get leveled up and finished. As y'all can see, thanks to the wipes, I'm only level 4. So I just got her high enough to show you guys around the beginning and help you get started. So, you're going to be stuck with that new hero screen, obviously. You have four classes to pick from, or do you? Now, that's the thing I want to I want to um I want to stress a lot. Do you? Because a lot of people are going to think that this game just has four classes. It gets a lot more complex than that. You have the sharpshooter. Mainly specializes in bows, guns, and stuff like that. Anything long range. But then again, these characters in this game can use whatever weapon you equip to them. So don't be afraid to explore around, play around, get fancy. If you want to put a put some magic on your forge, go for it. Especially if you got a cool build to do it with. Why not? Don't be afraid to experiment and play around. That's why they make the game like this. But you got the sharpshooter. You have the dust mage, which is a mage. <laughs> you have the forged, which is your melee-based berserker kind of style class. And you have the railmaster. The railmaster is just freaking crazy, all right? You would think this is, you know, your regular axe, great sword-wielding hammer, you know, just big spin-to-wind kind of guy. No, he's not. He's insane. He can use anything, and he has this train he brings around that... Gives buffs, does crazy damage, and, and all kinds of... I've never seen a class like that in a game. And that's, that's one thing I like about this is that's cool because um, if they make more classes for this game, they are going to be crazy. Now, I'm going to pick the Dust Mage here just because that's the class I'm used to to show you guys an example. Um, over here on the left side, you can look at, you know, their different abilities, how they work and, and stuff like that. And you, mind you, you can highlight over all of them to read what they do at later levels and everything. So... Spend an hour at this screen if, if you got to, you know, just studying what class you like. You can look at them all for every class. And, of course, you can customize your character. It is an MMO-like game after all. So, you know, you do have your, your genders, male, female, skin color, different heads you can pick, different hairs, hair color. It's not a ton of character character customization like some in, in-depth MMORPGs, but it's, it, it's more than enough. It's more than Path of Exile or Diablo give you. So, I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty grateful. But anyway, let's go ahead and pick 
our character here. Now, ooh, what is this? Remember when I told you, said, or do you when it comes to four classes? I told you things were going to get more interesting. You believe me now? So these are your relics, a.k.a. I just like to call them subclasses because that's pretty much what they are. You're going to get a whole another set of skills to go beyond your awesome self. Like I told you guys before, I am a Dusk Mage Blood Drinker, which I like to call a Dark Knight, and I will share why later on when I got the build more built up. But you have Bane. This is the more poison-based class. You can look at some of the moves right here. And again, you guys can highlight these moves, read them, and look through them on this screen. Meaning you don't have to take the class, make it, play with it, level it up a thousand times just to find out you don't like it. You can read all this stuff ahead of time. Do th does this go with what you want to build with these other classes? Now, it doesn't show you the moves, obviously, but it gives you a description of how they work. Bane, Poison. Blood Drinker is your crit, bleeding, lifesteal kind of kind of thing. Cold Heart, obviously by the name you guys can tell. Ice Base, Electrode, Electricity Base. Flaming Destroyer is your hardcore defensive fire kind of, kind of thing. Like I said, if you've played any kind of ARPG, you know where these where these subclasses are um, are going. I'm not saying that you know ARPG classes are generic, but you can just tell by the names what they do. If you're familiar with any type of RPG lore, you know pretty much where these are where these are going in the long run. Now just so for an example, I'm gonna go ahead and grab um grab Bane here just so I can keep going here through the menu for you guys. Now last but not least there is one more very important part to Torchlight. And this is the staple of when it comes to Torchlight. Your pet now you're probably gonna wonder, you know, what's so what's so important about your pet? This isn't your typical MMORPG where your pet just, you know, follows you around. And it's there for decoration and look cool alongside your character. No, 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 no. These pets they can take items back to town and sell them for you when your inventory is full. They attack with you. They do all kinds of sorts of things. Now these are the three basic ones that you start with, but they do give out special ones as a reward. As you guys can see, I had a different type of pet on my character. But um, you have the Golden Retriever, the Owl, and the White Alpaca to pick from. These are on PC. I know every console has its own exclusive extra pet. I know Xbox One is going to have a certain type of pet. PlayStation 4 is going to have another. Nintendo Switch is going to have another. Kind of like how they did things with Torchlight 2. So if you played Torchlight 2 on any other console platforms, you're kind of you should be familiar with that system. As you guys can see, here's my pet. You didn't see this one. On screen because this was a I'm not sure if he was an alpha or a beta reward which what I got him for I honestly don't even don't even remember but here's here, here's your proof you know I've been playing this game for uh for a good while if I have that guy <laughs> so now what I'm basically gonna do is just um show you guys around the menus let you take a look at the main hub town and stuff like that and this is why I say play multiplayer you get you know other players in your world the game's just so much more lively but like i said if single player is your thing that's fine and also the one thing i forgot to mention but i'm glad people are standing here is the game has five different difficulties you have easy normal hard another harder mode and one called like insane or brutal or something i can't remember the name so please do forgive me that but that's what these badges above people's heads indicate what difficulty they are on as you guys can see these guys over here they have the purple badges i think that's the game's highest difficulty they're more so just for bragging purposes, but it just shows you, you know, what kind of players are are around you and playing what difficulty. So don't worry, you're not going to be split up into different game instances because of your your difficulty levels or things like that. I've never personally played in a party with people using different different difficulty levels, so I don't exactly know um, what that does. A good amount of my time spent on this game's alpha and beta. I was playing solo, so I'm, I'm actually not completely sure what happens to be honest with you but this is your main hub town like i said this guy over here is your weapon salesman now as you level up and become stronger his wares are going to be a lot better and a lot more beneficial i know you guys see some crappy old junk in his store <laughs> that all it basically says is worth nothing and he'll hand it to you for free but as you level up as you make more progress his wares and goodies get better and better check back with him frequently i promise it's gonna it's gonna be a better selection than that 
Now, this guy here, this is your basic general merchant. And like I said, as you progress through the game, all of these guys get more stuff in their markets. I cannot stress that enough. It starts basic because you're basic. You don't you, you don't want basic stuff? Stop being a basic like no, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, I know somebody was ready to hit dislike for that. But um, you know, this is where you're gonna come buy your potions and stuff like that. My personal opinion, especially you know, if you're one of those guys that make crazy AoE builds and, and everything, stock up on potions, especially in the beginning. The bosses are brutal, your attack speed is slow, you feel you're gonna be feeling like you're hammering sponges for a while. Especially early in the game, stock up on potions. It's not gonna hurt. Now, this lady right here, this is my favorite. Vendor of all, the gambler. Now, a lot of people are probably going to tell you the gambler sucks, all right? Because, you know, she's like a supply drop system or, or loot box system. And, you know, that's going to turn people off immediately. Wrong answer. Number one, you don't buy anything from her with real money. So if you heard loot box, relax. I'm going to tell you where the RNG comes in. Just take a minute. Take a breath. You know, calm yourself. This is why Rhonda the gambler is cool. You can buy pieces of random gear off her for your current level for a certain chunk of gold. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why is that so cool? Why is that important? Well, allow me to explain something to you. All right, we're playing ARPGs, MMOs. There's a thing in this game called RNG. You get that. So, when you're going and farming bosses, killing mobs and stuff like that, you have your build set up. There's probably certain weapons you like to use. Well, you went and go and killed the boss, Johnny the Big Fat Hammer. Let's say that's the boss's name. You went and killed him seven times. And he's not dropping a sword for you and making, and he's only dropping a gun or a bow. So now, because that weapon is stronger, you're going to go and carry that around to use in the area ahead because you don't want to have the weakest weapon. Well, this is where good old Rhonda the Gambler comes into play. She's not going to drop, you know, the extra super, you know, epic quality version of the weapon that the boss you were killing was dropping. But at least you can get a random weapon that goes along with your build from her for a set price that will be of your level. To my opinion, that's better than getting a drop that is of no use to you. I'll take a green sword that I can use because I use swords rather than a gold gun that I'm or orange rarity gun that I'm never going to use. So I'm just saying, think about Rhonda, you know, when you're in that situation. I know, I know a lot of people aren't crazy about RNG and stuff like that. But for example, I like two hand swords. If, if, um, if Johnny, the, the, the big hammer keeps dropping guns, I'm going to come over here to Rhonda, spend 450 and go get me a sword that's. For level 7, if, I'm, if that's the current level I am. Now, last but not least, guys, I want to go ahead and show you your skill menus and all and all these good things, just so you guys have an understanding of what's going of what's going on here with your character. So first and foremost, this is your inventory, self-explanatory. All of your stats right here are on the are on the side. Um, they're all pretty pretty self self-explanatory. Approximate damage per second when you're attacking and you know and using your attacks. Your defense versus everything. Defense versus primary element. That goes by what gear you have equipped, of course. Your health. And then, you know, this will be how much you restore per second if you have health regeneration or gear or weapons that, um, that offer that. And that is your mana stat. You know, how much you can cast your magic special abilities or whatever. Better gear makes these higher. Just like every MMO and RPG out there, I think, I think you guys are all pretty, pretty um, pretty aware of that. And these are, you know, just more, just more breakdowns, more in depth of your, of your stats and everything right here. This is the current gear you have equipped. This is your items separated into different categories. This pet section here. These are the items that you have on your pet. Remember, you can send your pet back to town anytime your inventory fills up, and he'll go sell it for you or do whatever. So make sure you guys keep that in mind. Now, let's go ahead and take take a peek into the skill system. You're going to get skill points as you level up. You're going to have three different sections for your skills. For my character personally, I have a light section and as once I hit level once I hit level 5, two more skills are going to unlock. Once I hit level 10, another skill is going to unlock, etc., etc., etc. It keeps going on, keeps going over. These are my blood drinker skills. This is the the subclass or the relic that I equipped equipped earlier. 
I'm going to get skill points for that. As you guys can see, I have one Blood Drinker skill point. Once I hit level 5, I'll get two more skills I can unlock. Be careful where you put your skill points because you are limited on skill points. That's how it comes to corresponding what kind of build you want to make. So make sure as you are playing through the game, you're experimenting around with these, seeing what moves you like best, what corresponds with your with your playstyle and, and those kind of things. This is my dark section, my other type of my other type of magic. Again, same deal, same deal as before. This is your legendarium. At level when you first start the game, you get a skill that you can stick here. At level 20, you'll get another another skill that you can pick here. These are additional passive skills that will correspond with your build. They're going to give you a couple that you can um that you can pick from from a few different categories. So I would say, you know, look at a lot of these carefully before you just stick anything anything in there. Play around with your character, feel out your playstyle, see what you like doing. That's what I would honestly recommend before just sticking anything in there. And these are also, you know, your pet's skills. Like I said, your pet he they attack and do things right along right along with you. So these are different passive skills and everything that they have. This here's a social menu. This is where you're going to come to to invite friends. And mind you guys, on console, the UI looks damn near the same. It's just controller buttons instead of on PC. This is your map. You do have an option to fast travel in this game. I'll show you guys how that works here in a second. And these are your contracts. Now, your contract basically works very similar to a to a to a battle pass. Um, if you've seen if you've seen a battle pass before. This screen probably looks a looks a bit familiar to you. You get you go through your contracts by getting fame. You get fame by killing bosses, doing quests, doing side quests for the town for the townsfolk and stuff like that. Basically, just playing the game, going going through and getting these um these contracts done are pretty easy. I can imagine that the de devs probably be adding a lot more contracts to help give you different goodies and stuff like that in the game as you know the game progresses on. Now, I do want to show you guys one cool thing about this game. This game's um, fast travel system. We're going to go ahead over here just so I can give you guys a little peek of a little on peek of that. I do just have to leave this area. Okay, so now on console, I'm not sure exactly what button this will be right here in the bottom right hand corner. But here on PC, it's Z. If you push Z, and um, the place I can travel back to right now is Travail Point, which is the town we were just in, I'll spawn this little portal. You can spawn these portals whenever and wherever you want to. In older Torchlight games, you used to have like a you used to have to have a portal scroll on you, but now you can just cast it like a spell, which is really cool. It just has a cooldown time. And you can use this to travel back to town anytime you want to. But like I said, feel free to just utilize your pet because the cool thing about Torchlight is to keep you in the action, they give you the pet so you know you can always send them back to town to clear out your inventory and all kinds of things like that. But you literally just hit Travail point and it's going to bring you will bring us right back to that to that center podium that was right there in the town where you guys saw the players spawning out at right here and voila we're here back to town that's going to work for each area that you unlock like that through the game and anytime you want to use this to teleport to somewhere else you can as long as you know you have access to the area unlocked it of course um, you can travel to your fort once you have that unlock which is this game's like housing system or you can use it to travel back to the to the last portal that you put out. Now keep in mind you can't put out multiple portals and the most recent portal you put out is the one you're going to have access to. So make sure you guys remember that and do keep that in mind. But anyway guys, if y'all enjoyed this video, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up for this beginner's guide. Smash that thumbs up button for me and I want to thank you all so much for watching. It's your boy Snack127 and please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Till next time, peace out, take care.